Is this your bed now? Just your bed. What was that? <laughs> what are you doing? So it's been a minute since I've done a video like this, but I figured it was kind of a cool moment to explain a little bit behind the scenes. Weirdly enough, I am just like you, except if you were on crack. It takes an extraordinary lifestyle to do stuff like this. I'm sure for most YouTubers, that is honestly the case. Even if you do makeup or whatever the case is, once you get to this point, your life turns into something very weird. And I love it, I don't regret it. I'm not saying weird in a bad way, I'm just saying it takes weird people to do weird things like this. I want to say something that may sound very, very obvious to many of you, especially if you're from Patreon, you guys have known this for a long time. Quite frankly, the most hardcore supportive group ever in the history of this world got me through some of the darkest times in this channel. And that's kind of the clickbaity title of this. It really is the truth. I wanna rewind a little bit and talk about how I got here. What matters so much about how I got here is that I shouldn't have. And it has to do with the four rotor, the all wheel drive four rotor, which is sitting right over there. The engine is sitting right over there next to the beautiful Cosworth. That project is truly to me like a movie-like moment because there were multiple times where it should have just absolutely failed. And that's what I think separated me in the being realistic and, and, and being an adult and going, okay, this is a bad investment. If you, I don't think like that, but you know, this is an investment of time and money and I'm not getting it back and the project is dead. That happened twice. It was mostly on the second time and this is about 2017, 2018. I was balls deep into it. It was my obsession and honestly, it's such a big part of my identity. I had the rotary Corvette, which is kind of funny because that's what we're working on right now. I have some fun stuff for SEMA. Ruffle some feathers with that. But right when that happened, the three rotor had just died twice in a row. I couldn't afford to do anything. And I think it's very transparent that I reinvest the money that I get into this channel back into everything you see. It really is that simple. I don't siphon money off of YouTube to pay for other things. YouTube is my passion. I mean, you, you see it. I lost everything. It sounds weird to say it that way, but if you looked at my balance sheet, if you looked at my finances, I was very, very negative. Yet the, the spirit, the, the perseverance never made me question it. But when you look back, you're kind of like, holy crap. Now, that said, you see me here all the time. It's like I have no life outside of this, and that isn't by chance. Back in 2017, 2018, I saw that the four rotor was failing. I saw that it was gonna go nowhere, and I really saw it as that mature approach of saying, okay, this car, this monster project isn't meant to happen. I don't have all the resources, I don't have all the knowledge, I definitely don't have the experience, and maybe it's time to pack up and take all my toys and go home. And that's not what I did. When I first got this shop, um, I, I guess there's no other way to say it. I've lived here. I could have lived a life of making it a lot easier on myself. Many of you have said, oh man, he looks tired and all that. I mean, even right now this is filming 3.30 in the morning. That's when I finally get some moment to myself. By the way, increased heart rate part right there, that's not <laughs> my alone time. That's me working out. I actually set up a little kind of a push up, pull up sort of gym here during COVID. That was something that was very important to me. I decided to double down on the four rotor and focus on it and, and make my whole life about it because I did not want to be the failure that all you guys said could have been or clearly wasn't going to be an all-wheel drive four-rotor. It just was a foolish endeavor and I was not the right guy to do it. That's why I was like, you know what? I am going to babysit the shit out of this car. I'm going to babysit the shit out of this project and learn everything I have to do. Leave no stone and turn all those sort of cliche things. I was going to do absolutely everything and I put my money where my mouth is. I'm to show you guys over here. I have a very vocal guest. Yeah, so this is really her bed, her world. I'm just living in it. This cat is absolutely insane. She's terrified of people, except when they're here. Like, she wants all the pets. She's the cat that I found in the back, loved on until she finally trusts people, but she only trusts them if they're right here. It makes it very difficult to sleep here now, to be honest, because she's constantly like a rhinoceros headbutting me when I'm trying to sleep. Absolutely insatiable, no joke. But this little bunk bed setup, $200 thing from Amazon. It's the most flimsy thing ever. Jarrett slept up here, I slept down here. This is how we made the channel something from nothing, risking it all. You're allowed to have a bed at a shop. I don't have a, a house in here, so I make that very, very easy, but what? I'm trying to talk to them. Okay. With 
Eric and I are finally making it public. You guys know some more of my secrets. One of my favorite secrets is made possible thanks to Simply Safe. Eric and I have a little place together and we have two adorable little black cats. When I go traveling now, not only do I have the shop, but I also have a house with three adorable little things <laughs> inside there that I wanna make sure it stays safe. Eric and I went to a wedding in New Jersey last week. We actually set up the Simply Safe at our apartment to watch both the cats as we got homesick, as well as the cat's food bowl. It was a little automatic feeder thing, so that way we could be gone for a week. And I'll tell you what, that was the peace of mind I've been begging for for a long time. Not only do I have it here at the shop with all the cameras, with the door sensors, with the motion sensors, with the glass break, the flooding, all the temperature sensors, all those different things I wanna make sure it stays safe in here. I also have it at my apartment and don't have to worry about anything. It just keeps me, you guessed it, simply safe. What's really nice about this setup is here at the shop, if the cat's walking around, you can't completely be away because there's a cat in here. And so I can say I'm home, and then that still turns on the whole system for the doors and glass break and all that. But when everybody's gone, you can go to away. And that isn't the only easy way of managing the system. You can also do all of that from your phone. In the Simply Safe app, I can check on the cameras. There's the same three buttons. There I am right now recording this. If you guys are interested in learning more about the Simply Safe system, Go to simplysafe.com slash robdom to learn more. That's simplysafe.com slash robdom. Success is sometimes disguised as overalls and hard work. That's uh, that's what this is right here. You know, no lavish lifestyle, no, no crazy things. Sharing a bed with a stray cat. You guys know with all the bromance that happens on this channel, this is kind of an absolute dream blast. I honestly couldn't ask for more fun and amazing times and doing cool shit. This is... Uh, and this is honestly something I, I don't regret one bit. I think I've kind of said this anecdotally, but on the Rotary Vet, which is what I'm looking at right now, I had seven grand to my name, cash, you know, like that, that I could scrounge up. And even then I didn't have it in cash because I actually had a friend who bought the Rotary Corvette, the broken chassis for me while things floated financially. At that moment, I was living here at the shop. As you guys know, that's not loud, that's not proper, or whatever the case is. But I was determined not to spend any money. I was determined to focus it all on these projects. So many of you have so completely believed in me. Now, there are a lot of critics out there. Not so many now as there were then. But at that moment, I wasn't that guy, pal. I want you guys to be able to say, okay, Rob says he's gonna make a thousand horsepower of this car. He's damn well gonna do it. My obsession completely, almost completely tanked my entire life. As you may know, when I got the Lamborghini, I got it from the computer business. I own an IT business, which I don't make any money from. I wanna be very transparent about that. As soon as I left that, I didn't get a paycheck from it, which the goal, if you guys are following in my footsteps or looking for inspiration, compound your efforts. Don't just do something and make money at the moment and then walk away. That is a bad idea. But if you gain knowledge and education and experience in a resume or credentials, then you didn't waste that time completely. And that's exactly what happened for me. I've financed the shit out of that car. I have lucked out that that car has gone up in value, but I've not sold it, so that doesn't really matter, right? I came out to California with that background in mind, is that the computer business was doing kind of difficult because I wasn't running it anymore. I wasn't making money, period. So it, it then came down to being very smart with my investments and the little money that was coming in from YouTube to try and make it work and um, it wasn't. My goal was to tell the builder at the time that was gonna do the four rotor, what if we get the engine running and then people be interested in that and then that would build up hype and then you know I could do advertisements or something and kind of get this machine rolling that didn't happen for several years. Why I tell you all this is that I feel like I wanted to just kind of finally share that because that's how dedicated I am to all of this. That's why you see me so obsessed with this is because I honestly only mean something to you guys when I make videos. You shouldn't have a reason to care about me unless I'm giving something to you. You're the one spending the time watching this video. That's honestly more important than you know. You are wasting some of your time on me. And so I make sure that I try to do as much as I can to earn that. Cheesy or whatever, it's the truth. It's the truth. There's 100,000 of you that'll watch this. Take 10 minutes out of your life. That's a lot of time dedicated towards some shit that I'm doing. That's how close it came to failing. Absolutely could have gone wrong five different ways. And one of the ways it did go wrong, and this is, this is kind of the humorous side of it, is I thought I had figured things out, right? I was living in the shop. I uh, have a little, 
little bed up there, and even Jarrett, you guys remember Jarrett, he crashed with me. He was up on the top bunk and we ate shit. The Jarrett and I days, the darkest and some of the funnest, it wasn't known, it wasn't, none of this was guaranteed. Zero, negative cash. You know, any bit of money went to the four rotor, it still wasn't enough. Work out and shower at like a Planet Fitness, right? And that's what I did, is that there's a Planet Fitness just down the street from here. And so, forced yourself to stay in shape because I had to take a shower, so I had to go to the gym. Perfect, right? and avoid all the housing costs because you know it's expensive housing is expensive anywhere you go because i was chasing this down i have the house that i bought with my brother years ago which is now just in my name back in michigan sitting empty while i'm out here living in a garage 200 square feet in that little front room right there no obvious sign that i actually live there because i don't want the landlord to know that so i keep it super lightweight right nobody out here would expect a white person to do that it's kind of white privilege to be honest especially somebody with a lamborghini you're not really going to expect that here I am, I've got it figured out. I have the little Honda Insight, so I'm getting 60 miles a gallon, so the gas prices out here don't matter to me. They're not a big part of my expenses. I don't have a housing expense, so I'm living, honestly, in one sense, the LA dream, because I'm not paying the LA tax. Now, mind you, I do pay taxes on it, don't, don't take that out of context, but I just mean the cost of living being out here. And so I was capable of getting all the resources that this area provides with none of the obnoxious expenses, willing to risk it all. That worked up until COVID. COVID of all things. Okay, work at Starbucks during the hot summer days so I have a, a place to you know edit and have air conditioning so I keep the electric costs low. Work out in GTL <laughs> at uh, Planet Fitness, which isn't the best place to work out, but still better than nothing. Shower, life was good. What ruined all of that was COVID. Absolutely uh, blindsiding me. That also blindsided all the projects here, but we still persevered and survived. To be fully transparent, between all the guys at Patreon, I can't thank them enough. They truly carried this channel through the, the hardest moments and continue to carry it in a way that like I have a support network. It's such a wildly cool group of people and, and do not sign up for Patreon, do not do that. Do not do that because I'm mentioning it. Don't follow it like that, like the influencer thing. It's literally the people that are there are the people that should be there. And I could always do more for them. I owe them. But between them doing all of the Keeps ads, which as you guys know, Keeps Simply Safe, just filming an, an ad for Athletic Greens, which is actually, that ad will come out very soon. Just so you guys know, this stuff is actually pretty awesome because I used to drink wheatgrass when I was a geek. It's all done from the same marketing company that I'm really good friends with. Full transparency between doing the Keeps ads and whether or not you sign up for it doesn't matter. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. I am capable of taking that money and turning that into CNC machines and indie cars and doing these bigger things, these things that every one of us as car enthusiasts would just dream about. Like, there is no fucking reason for me to own a Cosworth or an Indy car because I can't race it. It's, I mean, I can go drive it out, but it's just like the Ford. It's not part of a, a, a class. I'm not a huge fan of classes, to be honest. It just doesn't make sense financially, right? But it only makes sense because I'm able to support it, and that's what I choose to spend the money that comes in from YouTube on. A $38,000 motor, the money comes from somewhere, right? And just so you guys know, when you see those ads, and surprisingly, a lot of you watch them, to be honest, you just let it roll through or click on them or whatever the case is. That really makes a lot of the big purchases on the channel possible. So just so you know that that's what that is. It really does actually translate. If you think about it, most people would want to spend it on cars anyway, right? That's like the dream. And I'm very fortunate, thanks to you guys, that I get to do that. I think you realize that I get guilty about that. Like, this is not a fair exchange. Those companies are dreaming to reach you. And you guys are willingly coming to this channel and watching me brings me back to what's behind you, which is the three rotor. I just wanna say thank you for everybody that's kind of stuck with me through all of this because I know, I know I could be well over a million. I could be a two million subscriber channel if I played the YouTube games. I am not a traditional YouTuber. And to be honest, I think that that makes me more successful, not mainstream successful, even though I'm gonna pass a million subscribers and I got a really cool surprise for you guys when we do. I think that not being traditional, being very transparent with you guys, it resonates. Some of you guys just wanna see me pull wheelies, make tons of power, and I try to do that, but I also try to share with you how, because I had other people helping me tune. I was never an engine builder. I never wanted to step into somebody else's world. I always wanted to have this expert, the world-renowned guy. We wouldn't be here if I didn't pick up the ball and do it myself. Most rewarding things in my life, I'm looking down at this three-rotor behind the camera right here. I made it a thousand horsepower. Now, I say that with asterisk because you know that 
takes a village to raise a child. But at the end of the day, if it broke, <laughs> I broke it. None of you did. That's a lot of weight on your shoulders. I'm fortunate that we have the situation we have now. For those of you wondering, I still stay here throughout the entire week. I am a mad scientist personality type. I do not like to be interrupted with what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bring a new level of rotary engines to life, partially so that way this channel just keeps humming so I can keep focusing on driving and having fun with them, but also giving you guys solutions too. There's no gimmick. I'm not secretly a Apex Seal sales guy. I am genuinely trying to do this for all of us because I'm in such a cool spot to do that. And that's why I stay here throughout the entire week and I will continue to do that. This is my absolute obsession. And if you were here, you'd be the same way. Got a lot of projects here, including oddly enough, the guy with the Corvette, my C8 Corvette finally called me and uh, they're finally working on the chassis for that. I just want you guys to know that I'm very thankful for everybody that continues to watch. Even as I'm diving deep into really technical things, if anything, that's when I appreciate you guys even more because it's easy to focus on pulling a wheelie. If your engine can't last at that horsepower level or that many times of launching it, you're not gonna pull the wheelie on a rotary engine. I appreciate that you guys see that all the glitters isn't gold, that there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes. In return, I try to make it as transparent as possible. If I blow the engine, you will know. I am gonna continue doing what I'm doing. We've got some fun things going on for SEMA. I wanted to have the four rotor with the entire carbon chassis body that wasn't in the cards, but that is still happening. I'm very thankful for that being done. I, I don't have the skill set to do that. The engine's obviously built I'm wiring it for high level mil spec stuff. The car is gonna make a fuck ton of power. I know that if there's a handful of you that are like, dude, quit making more power or quit, quit doing this, quit tearing it down, just go out and drive it. You're always rebuilding it. And that is not the truth. The truth is if I were to blow it up, I wouldn't have had a way of rebuilding it. Now I do. I have unlocked the keys to the, every castle. There's nothing held over me. I can rebuild that engine from scratch. That is more important to me than anything else. Now, while you guys think that making top horsepower is actually hard, making endurance power, to me, seems like a greater challenge. Being reliable on going with a lot of power, I think is the, the real challenge. That's why I was so adamant about that this whole year. So you guys have been watching me kind of be dormant, but that's been very technical. And so the four rotors coming back in the biggest way. The three rotor obviously is, is alive. I, that thing's gonna make uh, high eight second passes as soon as I can just dial it in and get to a quarter mile track. It's not driving. My foot's on the gas pedal the entire time and you hear those shifts. Me as the driver isn't doing anything different. Now it's just tuning it all out. The rotary vet's about to do some serious ass kicking. The C8's coming back. The Indy car is gonna be just utterly insane to learn on and grow, transfer my skills to the four rotor. Everything's all moving and that requires me being here to do that. I've been wanting you guys to know it, but I didn't want to like publicly broadcast it. I didn't want to get kicked out of the shop. My dream goal is to buy my own building. You know, like you see Cletus, you see Adam LZ and all those guys with insanely more resources than I do, buying compounds, buying castles, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, that hopefully someday is in the cards. And I have an idea for that. Maybe, you know, we'll do something. Maybe I'll start selling engines or, or more merchandise or something like that to raise money. Until then, I'm going to make every single square foot of this place matter, including the one with the bunk beds. It's been a weird, weird, weird ride. I am only human, but I think that it makes it look like I can do insane things, partially because of editing. You have to be obsessive. And you have to be weird to make things like this possible. Hopefully if that is inspirational, awesome. Uh, if you guys want to know how I did it, I think I'm one of the most realistic scenarios that you can kind of model after and learn what to do and what not to do. There's my secrets to success. Thank you so much. And you guys will get right back to all the adventures in the next video.